G'day, Dylan O'Donnell here from the Byron Bay Observatory. Astronomy is experiencing a renaissance right now, especially backyard astronomy, because we're all locked down in our backyards. Uh, I've spoken to all the show sponsors about this and uh, it's true. It's a worldwide phenomenon right now. Uh, you may have noticed this with your local astronomy groups or on social media. Everybody is outside looking up and that's great. So today I'm going to show you a little bit about the Bintel Astronomy Calculator. This is something that I built a little while ago, uh, but I've recently rolled out a bunch of updates and I want to explain how this works. You need to know this. It's about how to match a camera with a telescope using maths, which you probably weren't good at at school because you have some sort of weird block or issue. I've done it for you, so you don't have to. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you're watching Star Stuff. <laughs> Before we get into it, I have been out in the observatory, the uh, next home observatory that Sidereal Trading helped me set up. Uh, it's been wonderful. I got a really good run of weather. So let me bore you to death with some photos first. First up, we have Omega Centauri. Uh, now this is a massive globular cluster in the Milky Way. It is the biggest, in fact, and you can only see it from the Southern Hemisphere. They're pretty sort of dull to look at, I reckon, globular clusters, but I had a little discussion online about the age of the stars here. Most globular clusters have really old stars, so they tend to look very orange, but you'll notice some blue ones. Now I described these as the younger stars, which some people had issue with. The blue stars are hotter and more energetic and usually burning brighter than the others because they've been refueled. They've essentially collided and been born again in the good sense. So I don't know if younger is the right word, I give you that. They're sort of not the same stars as the orange ones, so they're sort of revitalized. They are sort of new. Anyway, I took that shot with the one-shot color camera. The QHY 24-7 has been really great. What I like about it is that sometimes when I just want to do these quick shots that I'm not going out and spending a lot of time gathering the mono data as well, it's been nice to just quickly shoot galaxies. But I also shot Leo's triplet really, really quickly. And I was amazed at how well it turned out for a color camera. I don't often just do that with color. The other galaxy I recently took was Centaurus A. Again, this was super quick using the Celestron Rasa 11. 75 minutes of integration, one minute subs. Quickly knocked this over with the one shot color camera and it turned out pretty good, I reckon. Uh, there's a lot of detail in there, even though the field was really, really wide and this is a smaller galaxy. I was able to expose a lot of the outer detail, which you don't normally see in images of this galaxy. I also released an 8K version of the Carina Nebula. Now this is one where I have combined data from the ZWO 1600 with the color camera, another true color image. This Carina mosaic that I did is two panels, roughly in the same configuration as one I'd done in the past. Uh, but I kept seeing this image because it's been used by Celestron at uh, events. So you might have seen it as the background at Neef last year. When it's blown up that big, I was going up to it and I was seeing all the little artifacts and things I hadn't cleaned up properly. So I just wanted to do this image all over again. Another one I grabbed was the Statue of Liberty Nebula. This is a cool nebula just around the corner from Carina. It's sort of outshone by Carina, but it is a cool looking object. Uh, definitely some star formation going on in there. And again, I was able to catch this in true color using the one-shot color camera, but combining it with the hydrogen alpha as a luminance layer as a HJ RGB image. So hopefully you like that one too. But today I want to talk to you about the Bintel Astronomy Calculator. This is something I've been developing just in the background, I've been slowly upgrading it in the last couple of weeks to put some new features in there. This video is obviously sponsored by Bintel, who have been supporting me in this way for a long time. I work with them closely, they work with me. It's a good deal. And I just bought something from Bintel this week. I've got a new telescope coming, a C11, uh, because I saw Astro Backyard got one, and uh, that made me very, very jealous, and I want one too. All right, let's do some maths. All right, so here's the uh, Bintel website, which is just bintel.com.au. You can obviously use this from anywhere in the world, of course. Uh, we'll go to the, I've uh, developed a few tools, but we're going to the Bintel Astronomy Calculator. The last iteration didn't really have pre-filled telescopes or cameras. You could still put in all the settings as you liked. It didn't just pre-populate these. So we've actually pre-populated them now. And this is drawing them directly from the inventory of the store, which I think is really cool. So I'll choose my 11 inch Rasa here. You can see it gives me some basic 
information without even putting in anything else it already calculates the uh, aperture the maximum magnification i probably need to round off that <laughs> that number the resolving limit which is about half an arc second and native focal length which is what we know anyway but now the real fun comes in when we choose a camera well let's choose the ever popular zwo 1600mm and you'll see here it gives us a preview target of the moon it shows us how big the moon is going to look on the camera chip it gives us the camera chip field of view in degree it tells us the resolution that we're sampling at and we want the ideal resolution for sampling to be between this 0.67 arc seconds and 2 arc seconds and this one's 1.26 arc seconds so see exactly what the field of view is and whether we are actually getting that arc second per pixel and it tells us the sampling is good and if we hover over it gives you a little tool tip about what this means uh, it means our stars are going to look not too blocky not too blurry just right just in the middle which is perfect you can see the effect if we change cameras here so let's go down to this color camera there we go so this camera is a smaller chip and because it's the smaller chip we see more of the moon let's fiddle around because it doesn't end there the other features i've rolled into this is for example we have eyepiece i have 14 mil on 50 degrees field of view so there we've got a simulation of what the eyepiece will see what the camera chip will see fantastic and the great thing about this is we can go ahead and add a reducer so um, or a magnifier now you wouldn't use a barlow in fact you can't use a barlow on a schmidt astrograph so let's swap over to my new telescope uh, which is the edge hd 11. okay <laughs> that 11 inch telescope is getting me much closer to the moon now you can see we're zoomed right into the surface here both on the eyepiece and the camera chip um, and it doesn't have to be the moon we can change targets here let's try Omega Centauri this is the other upgrade I made to the calculator was that I now have visual targets with which to orient ourselves with admittedly some of these are southern hemisphere targets but I have thrown in a few uh, northern hemisphere targets just so it's fair you can see the field of view there on Andromeda is way small. Uh, so with this sort of focal length, uh, we definitely want some kind of reducer. So let's try the 7x reducer, 0.7x reducer. I think they make that. Um, so let's see how that would improve our field of view. And there we go, we've zoomed out a bit. Obviously not a, not a wide field telescope, this one. Uh, and you'll notice we have slight oversampling now. So it explains what slight oversampling is. Because this is only slight, that's not a problem. You still see there's a tick there. So it's slightly oversampled, but this isn't actually a deal breaker at this point. Now let's go the other way. Let's add a Barlow on here. And you'll see that the, uh, the field of view of the eyepiece gets very small indeed. <laughs> Look at that, we're right at the core of Andromeda. So let's change up our um, target now to something smaller, say a planet. Now we've got a great region here. We can see exactly how large Jupiter is going to be on the camera chip. Much smaller chip, better view. But the good thing about this list is it actually pulls out. You can see all the micron sizes here. You can see all the resolutions. Same with the telescopes. You can browse through and quickly see all the F numbers, all the focal lengths. Uh, which works really well. It also pulls the um, product directly from Bintel's database. So if you happen to want to buy something, you can just click on it and <laughs> directly add to cart. All these preview targets listed in here uh, are all for various different sizes, which might be helpful for you. And there are the targets by scale that allowed me to actually just lay them out in code so you can see how big things are relative to each other. Because we're going from the really small, like Saturn here, over to the really large like Andromeda and uh, it's interesting to see whether your telescope can do a big range of these or just a few of them or do you need to buy a new telescope just for fun at the bottom I've put Intel customer favorites I don't know why so many people buy dust caps like is dust caps <laughs> is there a big market for dust caps I don't know uh, clearly the Celestron XYZ and DSLR tierings and adapters and things like that do really well but I, I find this list really interesting. Anyway that is the Bintel Astronomy Calculator. I do hope to put a drop down for eyepieces in the near future uh, once I work out how to populate all of that. Do give it a go and let me know if you find any bugs and hopefully this will help you get the best combination of telescope and camera in the future. It's worthwhile having a play and note that you don't have to use uh, these drop downs. You can put in your own gear 
you can put in your own DSLR cameras or whatever you've got in here. As long as you've got the specs, you can just dump those details in and try the previews out. I think it's pretty cool. I hope you enjoyed that video and I hope you end up spending a lot of money that you really shouldn't, but you should because astronomy is amazing and we are all addicted. Remember, everything is meaningless and we're all going to die.